Hi everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about hemorrhoids or piles that are frequently called. Um, first thing to know that uh, how common are hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids are extremely common. In my experience, I think almost every adult has hemorrhoids over the age of 18 or 19. Almost all of us get hemorrhoids. Many of us don't know about them because they are on the inside and they don't cause any problems or any symptoms in vast majority of people who have hemorrhoids. So first thing to understand is what are hemorrhoids. So I've drawn the bottom end. So that is the buttock, buttock cheeks. That is the opening of our bottom end, the anus. And this narrow bit here is the anal canal, which is about this long, maybe inch and a half, two inches long. And above it is the like a, a big organ called the rectum, which is our bottom end um, of the colon, the rectum, just inside the anal canal, uh, where the anal canal meets the rectum, um, is where the internal hemorrhoids happen. So you can see these little blood vessels which are bulging, like little cushions, they're bulging inside. You can't feel those on the outside. So these are the one which are called internal hemorrhoids ones that are bulging and they bulge out of our bottom end like hanging out they don't have to be hanging out all the time they can come in and out when we go to the toilet they might come out and when we uh, clean ourselves they might go back in and they are called external hemorrhoids most people have internal hemorrhoids they don't feel anything on the outside some people have external hemorrhoids but People who have external hemorrhoids are, usually have internal hemorrhoids as well. So this is what hemorrhoids are. So why do hemorrhoids happen? There is one thing that causes hemorrhoids, which is too much pressure in the bottom end. And what causes too much pressure in the bottom end? Anything that causes too much pressure from above um, coming down, so it squeezes the uh, everything down this way so like all the blood is being pushed down so people who sit on the toilet for a long period of time straining so people who have got constipation but also people who go to the toilet very frequently say they go four or five times a day with loose motion etc although they're not straining but they're still going and sitting on the toilet for a long period of time and that makes everything squeeze down and all the pressure comes down and that causes the blood vessels inside the bottom to bulge yeah it's like squeezing a balloon if you squeeze the balloon in one end the other side of the balloon the air goes into the other side and it bulges same thing happens with the blood vessel they start bulging on the inside it does not happen uh, over a day or two over a week or two it happens over many months or many years with constant straining uh, so people who are severely constipated or people who have a habit of sitting on the toilet for a long period of time sitting on a toilet trying to read Harry Potter all in one go is perhaps not the best thing to do is to do is go to the toilet do the business and come out people who do heavy lifting so when they lift the tummy pressure increases and everything is squeezed down so whether they do heavy lifting in the gym or whether they, they do heavy lifting at work both of them will cause uh, high risk of developing hemorrhoids in women because of pregnancy the a baby is occupying the tummy over here and everything is squeezed in, everything is pushed down and that causes hemorrhoids. So far more common in ladies as compared to men. So what are the symptoms of hemorrhoid? What problem will people get? As I said earlier, most of us have hemorrhoids after the age of 18, 19. As we grow older, the chance of developing hemorrhoids increases. Uh, many of us don't even know that we have hemorrhoids because the commonest symptom is no symptom. They are on the inside and we don't even know they are there. Uh, some people feel when they go to the toilet these little bumps or lumps come out or come to the edge of the anus. Sometimes once they have cleaned themselves they go back in themselves. Sometimes they have to be pushed back in. And so the second common symptom is lumps in the bottom end. Uh, they look like little cherries coming out. Third common symptom is bleeding. And please note the bleeding is fresh blood. And 
it is sometimes just on the paper or when you clean yourself on the, on the toilet paper but sometimes it can drip into the toilet bowl sometimes it can spray into the toilet bowl so the whole toilet bowl can become quite red it's quite alarming it's worrying people think that it is very scary and they might have torrential bleed which can um, even uh, severely affect their life however in my whole career i have never seen anyone um, die from bleeding hemorrhoids um, yes post operative uh, bleeding from hemorrhoids can be quite heavy and can be at times life threatening but hemorrhoids which have had no surgery i have never seen them bleed so much that that can cause uh, risk to someone's life but it can be quite alarming seeing it itching in the bottom end so it feel like you know there's something there you want to scratch a um, bit of discharge of mucus clear slime coming out into the with sometimes with the stools sometimes without the stools just go back again the bleeding is usually separate from the motions so at the end of the uh, going to the toilet either the blood is on the paper or it sprays into the toilet um so it's not mixed with the motions patients can get discomfort in the bottom end it feels like a dragging sensation in the bottom end heavy feeling in the bottom end however pain with hemorrhoids please remember is extremely unusual yeah the only time hemorrhoids become very painful in my experience is when they are thrombosed or they are strangulated hemorrhoids so when the external hemorrhoids come out sometimes they can't go back in yeah because the straining and everything or they're too big and they get congested they get too much blood in it and blood clots when the blood clots it become like a big lump now that big lump can be extremely painful sometimes the piles come out and because the straining they all come out and they can't go back in it's like putting a finger through a ring sometimes the finger swells and the ring can't be taken off and the fingers keep swelling same thing happen because the bottom end is like a ring once sometimes in few people when the hemorrhoids come out they can't go back in because the ring is too tight and they become swollen like grapes or big dark red cherries and that is a very um painful condition called strangulated or thrombosed hemorrhoids so that is the only time the hemorrhoids got symptom they're not common the pain the rest of the symptoms are quite common so how can we avoid hemorrhoids the most of us as i said will get hemorrhoids avoiding hemorrhoids um, is very difficult i think it's part and parcel of our life part and parcel of growing old however if you don't want to have troublesome hemorrhoids try and avoid straining don't sit on the toilet too long avoid too much heavy lifting especially heavy lifting which affects your bottom end of your tummy and your pelvis so stooping down and lifting things from uh, bending down stooping down can cause more pressure in the tummy and cause um, hemorrhoids obviously pregnancy can cause hemorrhoids so try and avoid straining don't sit on the toilet too long so what is the treatment for hemorrhoids i have divided the treatment of hemorrhoids into two, two different varieties non surgical treatment in which there is no surgery involved and surgical treatment let's take one at a time so first of all non surgical treatment now creams and suppositories which are available for hemorrhoids over the counter from any pharmacy you can get um, after speaking to the pharmacist and they are okay for mildly uncomfortable hemorrhoids or itchy hemorrhoids or hemorrhoids which are quite swollen and uh, with sometimes with the cream suppository they tend to shrink and go back in if they are very swollen and painful i suggest what you do apply some ice pack on it so wrap an um, ice pack uh, or something into a piece of cloth and put it against the hemorrhoids don't put directly ice pack on it it will get stuck it will be very very painful now when the patients come to the clinics like outpatient clinic etc elastic bands can be put onto the hemorrhoids they don't require any anesthetic or any sedation or anything like that little tight elastic bands with a little instrument are placed onto the hemorrhoid and it takes the blood supply away so it basically goes around the hemorrhoid very tight and it loses the blood supply it falls off after a few days or part of the hemorrhoid falls off uh, uh, what are the uh, complications of this mainly are uh, pain 
and obviously when the hemorrhoid falls off there is a small risk of very heavy bleeding. Injections can be put into the hemorrhoids again in the outpatient, don't require any anesthetic, etc. Both these treatments sometimes require repetition, so it uh, will require uh, quite frequently to be repeated, few weekly, um, uh, usually six weeks apart, three or four times. They all have failures, none of them are guaranteed to work. The success rate of these two treatments is maybe 80-90%. Um, the smaller the hemorrhoid, better the chance of these working. The larger the hemorrhoid, and if they are very, very big, these treatments cannot be done, and they will require surgery, especially the hemorrhoid, which are hanging out all the time. They can't go back in. These treatments most frequently don't work, and the treatment, their main treatment is surgery. In some centers, they also use infrared or electric uh, current to clot the hemorrhoids, so they shrink after a few weeks. So last but not the least, what is a surgical treatment for hemorrhoids? Should only be left for the hemorrhoid which are causing fair few symptoms and the non-surgical treatment is not working or the hemorrhoids are too large to uh, the other treatment to be successful. So one old-fashioned is uh, very effective is cutting them out called hemorrhoidectomy which means just removing the hemorrhoids are still used quite successfully. Uh, the more newer procedure in the last 10-15 years is stapling of the hemorrhoids. So they are cut across with a staple gun. So they, the blood vessels uh, are cut in the middle so the blood can't flow through anymore and the hemorrhoids shrink in and go back inside. In some centre they also tie just the blood vessels. Uh, how successful this is, the answer is I don't know. However, some people do do them. They require more expertise to do. Uh, Surgical treatment is effective. What are the side effects of surgery? Obviously, any surgery in the bottom end is extremely painful, can be very painful for several days or even for a week or two. The second problem that can happen is bleeding. When you cut blood vessels, there's a risk of bleeding from them and the bleeding can happen immediately after surgery or even a few days or week or two after surgery is performed. And I have seen, in my experience, torrential bleeding after surgery from hemorrhoids. Not very, very common, thank God, but can happen. So if somebody has had surgery and they're experiencing bleeding, not minor bleeding, because after any surgery, you would expect a bit of a trace of blood on the poo or on the paper, etc. when you're cleaning. However, if the blood is coming and not stopping, then you really need to go back to the hospital to see the surgeons so they can control the bleeding. Um, sometimes what happens when the hemorrhoids are cut out because every operation heals with scarring the scarring can make the bottom end very tight so um, things can't go through easily and the bottom end can become very tight and very very sore very difficult treatment uh, for this condition um, obviously if too much is cut out then some patients uh, will lose the control of the bottom end, so the bottom end becomes very loose. So when it becomes very loose, they can't control the wind or sometimes even poo. So they keep st uh, staining their underpants. Again, a very distressing side effect of surgery, but unfortunately um, that can happen after surgery. And then again, not a very common side effect. Thank God for that. I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you very soon. Thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe and if you like the video then give me a thumbs up.